In the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, one of the core concepts revolves around deck building. Players can pick and choose between what they think are the best cards to optimize their strategy, and they can even upload their deck list to YouTube for feedback in order to improve their deck. But occasionally YouTube comments can be a little bit interesting, so in most cases people don't take every single comment into account when improving their deck. In this series, I'm going to be listening to every single comment over the course of five episodes and the most popular comments will be added onto a voting poll where then commenters can vote and choose what cards are added or taken out of my deck that I build while I have no creative control whatsoever. This is YouTube Plays Yu-Gi-Oh! What compelled me to let the comment section decide what happens to the deck? Hmm. I don't know. But anyway, before we go ahead and see what changes were made to the Sylvan deck, like, comment, subscribe. Pretty please. And also remember, the comments that you put down below, be sure to include what you want to see to go in, what you want to see come out, because this is the last opportunity, because episode 5 upcoming will be the last one of this mini-series. It's condensed. So make your last change for the following episode count. Think hard, pay attention to the matches, see what you'd like to tweak in the deck, what interactions you'd like to see come forth. And yeah, I'm worried what you guys are going to suggest for the very last one. And I'm very worried what's going to happen in the polls. But let's go ahead and see what the polls have changed for today's episode. So, we're going to take a look at the deck and um, yeah. There's some interesting card choices that are now in the deck. Um, we'll start off with the one for one swap right off the back. Reasoning is gone, and in its place is the World Carrot Weight Champion, um, which is actually not too bad. So, if this card is in your graveyard, so if it's either excavated or I send it off Orphan Scorpio, um, I can send a plant from my hand or face up in the field to the graveyard, summon it. So let's say I have a brick in my hand or something like that, or I want to target that one in the graveyard, like Rose Lover, I can pitch it, get a free body, then get more free advantage potentially. So, and it's a level four, decent stats with 1900 attack. So, darn it stats, what are you gonna do? Um, and then yes, let's address the elephant in the room. Flower Knight, snaps a dragon, snaps a little, 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 little snap crackle pop, and Cherub Sprout, which is interesting because Cherub Sprout is usually one of the better excavated targets. But all three of those are gone. In place of Convulsion of Nature. As long as this card remains face up on the field, both players must turn their respective decks upside down and proceed with the current duel. Basically, I don't know what I'm, what I'm always going to top deck, what I'm excavating, and I'll also know what my opponent's playing. Yeah, so it's an interesting tech choice. Um, we will see how it goes. Um, yes, but in the extra deck, ooh, hit the mic. We've got two changes. More so we're changing one engine out for another. So two cards for two cards. You'll notice there is no more Black Rose engine, i.e. A, I, a Cross Rose Dragon and Black Rose Dragon. Because we have realized last time that we were usually either short an extender or it missed timing because it's a win. And instead we have Ultimae Zulkin and Crystal Wing, which is possible because uh, we can use Sport to modify its level based on what we banish. Or if we have Copy Plant, we can just copy the, any of our 8s or our 7s. And then we can cheese out Zulkin and cheese out Crystal Wing, as long as we set a card. Which is pretty good and pretty likely because we do have a decent amount of spells and then we can pop off further from there. So, 
yeah, those are the changes. Um, now it's just a matter of how effective are they going to be. Okay, let's get this convulsion over with. And luckily we are starting out first, going up against Tri-Brigades. Um, which is a decent meta contender. It's got some good combo lines, depending if you're going the Zoo variant, or the Bird Up variant, or the Melfi package, there are a lot of options. And we just are only able to end on an IP with um, Rage Jasmine, which means we can go into Protected Abermax, but Abermax can still be bounced by Zoo King Alpha. Which means we are basically left to defend ourselves with a lonely spore. And yeah, of course it gets Popeye Kalantosa and I get beaten to death by a raccoon. So we move on to the next game, which is against Buster Blader. Which recently got some reprints in uh, Ghost of the Past, so that's fun. Um, and it, we literally end on a P-Pass. P-Pass. Um, and then it's a slow grind. Luckily we don't have to face down anything like... Getting surgery and the destruction swordman, the big boy, but we're kind of whiffing with all the ashes and the bad mills, so it's a very, 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 very desperate situation. And uh, yeah, we just go ahead and we get killed by the Buster World. We move on to game number three, and this time we resolve Convulsion of Nature, so we kind of not, we know that what we're going to top deck, so ideally. Yeah, we just rearrange our deck. We don't have much, we just have the big the big bird. But luckily, Valkyries don't kill me right off the back, which does give me a shout in with a chant, and I also get to use at least Peacekeeper to help fix the top of the deck and potentially make something happen, in which case I actually resolve the Ultima Zulkan combo line. Get a Crystal Wing, but Crystal Wing can't out a Borlo Dragon, unfortunately. Because it doesn't have a level. And I don't want to crash, because Borlode can just reduce his attack, and I can't respond to that. So we gotta do this the old-fashioned way. We make Avermax, which can actually out Borlode Dragon, and he's protected via IP's effect, and uh, with no good top picks, we swing in for battle with the Carrot, and we take a dub. And then we go on to game number four. We'll actually be only have four games today, so this is the last one. And it's for all the marbles, so at least make it a 2-2 record for the end of the day, and we pop off quite nicely. Um, our Carrot Wade coming back does get belled, but luckily we just needed the Jasmine and Grave, so we can bring out our Borload Savage, who negates the Lightning Storm, and yeah, that's it. Our board gets eaten by Jagoon. Uh, there's no chance I can come back from this. Zero. Zilch. So, I just kill myself with Carrot. And we end with a 1-3 record. For today and 316, it's not great, but it's getting there. Just when I face anything that's relatively meta, I struggle. So what did we learn? Um We are very very, very susceptible to hand traps, and if we don't mill anything playable, we're dead in the water. Very dead in the water. Like, summon P. Pass. P. Pass. This deck is P. Pass. Um... I don't know. It's okay. But it's not up to me. It's up to you. So as always, gentlemen, comment down below what you would like to see change to this deck. This will be your last opportunity to make a lasting impression on this deck. So make it count. Show me what you want. So tell me what you want. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I will see you in the next episode.